Welcome, I'm Marybeth Quinn, a mixed media painter, and today I'm going to show you how I made this painting as a way to push the boundaries of my work and give you three of my best ways that I do that. I'm beginning this painting here. I had a, a 46 by 46 piece of just raw canvas left over at the end of a roll and I thought, okay, this is a perfect place to start. So I cut a big piece of it and I launched in. And this size is really the first way that I push the boundaries of my work. Number one is to drastically upsize or downsize out of your comfort, comfort zone. By taking uh, such a big piece of canvas and really trying to do something new, I was just gonna push my boundaries because I usually paint big, but not this big. And when you paint really big like this, you just, you have to move your body differently. And when we really try to master a process, let's say, um, let's say a landscape within a certain uh, size, you, you refine your movements, you refine um, what works, what doesn't, and you really start to work in patterns, which is incredible. I mean, that's the way our brains sort of use expertise, is by figuring out what works and leaving the rest out. But to really push the boundaries of your work, you have to get out of those patterns. So that's what I'm doing here by working so large. And when I did this painting, I wasn't using a whole lot of collage yet. This was months ago. And so right here, these pieces here, they look kind of small, but for me at the time, they were really, really large feeling pieces. So I'm just placing some randomly all over the canvas and just trying to learn what happens, what happens with these larger pieces. Now I've got some pretty bold color and I'm, I'm just trying to place it on the canvas. What's really a challenge for me at this point is that I keep wanting to get really locked into a destination. That's actually always a challenge for me. And I found that it really got very active with this large canvas. Like my brain kept trying to say, where are we going? What is this? What is this mark for? What is this supposed to be? And so I kept having to just stand back and sort of breathe and remember that this was a scrap piece of canvas. I may sell this piece one day when I decide that it's completely done, or I may not, but it really was just for this purpose, to push me out of my comfort zone. So that thing that my brain kept wanting to do is really what number two is on this list. Don't decide what you're painting until it's obvious. So since I'm trying to do something new, my brain trying to decide exactly what was going on and exactly what all this was representing was just my way of expressing how uncomfortable it feels to be out of the comfort zone. So being this large and also deciding that you're not going to determine yet what this is, is a great way to discover something new. You just saw me turn the canvas upside down. This is something 
If you've watched my videos before, you see that this is something I do quite frequently to get myself unstuck or to keep myself from getting too locked in. So that's what I'm doing here. Just turning it over since it's very likely that I'm going to start deciding that this is for sure a landscape and that this is for sure the horizon line and this is the sky and start representing things. And my whole point in doing this was that with my landscapes, I have wanted for quite a while to become less representational, but it was very difficult. I enjoy painting representational landscapes a lot, but I wanted to see what happened when it was only vaguely representational. But no matter how I tried, I kept wanting to lock into, oh, those are trees. And then before I knew it, they looked so much like trees that I was going in the, the other direction of where I had said I wanted to go. So right here, you see me making big brush strokes. Um, and trying to make marks that aren't supposed to represent anything. I'm trying to just stay with the color, um, stay with how it feels, and not decide too quickly. The thing about deciding too quickly, there's of course absolutely nothing wrong with it, with deciding what you're going to paint. but. If you're wanting to stretch yourself, then deciding really quickly what it is, you won't see the opportunities for it to be something new. But if you can manage to stay open and not make any claims on what this is supposed to be, then you just can keep painting and see what emerges. And that really, that was my goal. I wanted this painting to develop naturally and then to stand back at some moment and see something emerge and show me what it was as opposed to me deciding. So this is gonna take a lot of practice for me. It's not, it's not completely natural yet. But, but I'm dedicated. And you know, it was worth this big piece of canvas. When I was a younger painter, I would have never devoted a big piece of canvas like this to my own development. There's no way. It, it would have seemed impractical. It would have seemed um, like a waste, but now that I'm older, you know, I'm in my later 50s. I, I see myself doing this when I'm in my 80s. So it has become far more about the practice than it is about those other practical things like making money. And of course, you know, making money is very important. But without the art practice, you can't develop. So my third way to push my boundaries is to grow my tolerance for unattractive outcomes and stretch that as far as I can go. As you can see here, I'm, I'm just playing with collage. So I have these just clunky, chunky pieces of collage going on the canvas here. Like I said, when I did this painting, I wasn't using as much collage as I'm using today. Well, now I understand. It takes layers and layers of collage to really get the wonderful effects that I'm going for, where you're just seeing so many layers working together. Well, this is, is some of my first experiences with it. So I'm, I'm really having to remind myself that it's okay to just let this keep developing. This 
stage in this painting realistically I I don't know what I'm making I don't know whether this is the top or the bottom and I don't like it all the way that it looks but yet I'm right on track that's that's what I really am trying to practice over and over is this feeling of these stages here in the middle where nothing looks good it looks like chaos and for all practical purposes I, I don't know where I'm going that this is this is the way this is the way if you think about a painting that at the end it finally comes together and it looks fantastic and you know you're done because it finally came together all of those minutes or hours and strokes of the brush and things being applied to the surface those were all before it came together so it just it makes logical sense that it's not going to look very good until that point it's not supposed to so i think a lot of times in in my past i have taken score way too soon or felt like things should look way better than they do before it was even possible for them to look pleasing or organized or have any harmony or, or anything like that. I'm still in the beginning stages here of just getting things onto the canvas. So it really does take a big tolerance for things not looking the way you want them to. If, if we feel like we should quit every time it doesn't look good, then we're never going to complete paintings and we're never going to develop as artists because that takes the whole process. It takes being able to get through all of it. So that's what I'm practicing here. Just practicing being okay with being in process. So I just, you saw that I had some tempera paint sticks right there that I was just accentuating some gold marks and now I'm adding some darker paint there to the middle. I keep turning the painting. I think at this point I have decided, yes, this is developing as a landscape. I was, that was really my intention at the start, but I wanted to at least stay open if it wound up being something else, I wanted to be able to pivot and just go with it. But at this point, I am happy with um, the direction that this is a landscape. Although I will say, I'm not really sure which is the top and which is the bottom. And I like that. I don't want to get too locked in. So I'm just, I know where my horizon line is. And I know that there'll be, wherever the top is, there'll be trees on the top and there'll be reflections of those trees in the, in the water. So I'm just working with those broad guidelines. And now I'm adding some, some more collage pieces just for interest and just trying to move ahead and stay as unrepresentational as possible. So when I just do this little quarter turn right here, this is me just attempting to lose that horizon line, even though I know it's there. What I want to do is just keep applying color and some form to the painting without thinking of the spaces that I'm doing it in as representing something. My aim is to do some really free, make some free 
moving marks and shapes. And, you know, once I decide this is where the water is, then if I decide that too, too early and don't flip that painting, this quarter turn like this, then I'm going to start doing water the way I've always done it, which there's nothing wrong with that. I, I love the way that I've done my landscapes. But if I'm wanting to move this forward and see how loose I can get and see how, how far out there I can get with um, the abstractness. And so, so there is some representation, but just enough, only just enough to suggest then I'm, I'm really gonna have to do some new things. So that's why I keep flipping it. And that's really the exercise of this whole painting. There's my mom and dad's dog. She'll come to visit me sometimes. My studio is in the garage of the house that we all live in. And so she will pass through from time to time and visit me. So now I have turned it again and I'm adding more of those tempera paint sticks. I have a lot of links to the materials and tools that I've used in this painting. I have them in the description. So if you're interested in any of that, be sure to look there. And I have also listed, I believe, the uh, the homemade tissue papers that I'm using here, I've listed the video in which I talk about how I make most of them. So you might find that interesting as well. So now I'm starting to lighten some things up, use some lighter colors. I love that contrast of the dark blues and greens against those really light, um, light greens. And I think right now I'm, I'm getting ready to add some, some more form to this thing and really put in some, some serious light. I think at this point I'm trying to decide exactly where I want my light. and my focal point. There we go. There it is. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted uh, a part where the eye would go first. Like it would, it would be a high contrast area where you could really loosely silhouette some tree lines and maybe some clouds. So I chose that to, to the right there of the midline. And I don't know if you saw me at some points, I would hold out both of my arms and move them into the middle just to really see exactly where the middle was. I, I kept wanting to make sure that I did not put anything eye catching right in the middle of the canvas. It's far more interesting when it's off to one side or the other. And it's also more interesting if your horizon line is above or below the midline. That took me some years to figure out as well. So here I'm just really beginning to define these trees and the shoreline and the light light on the water. I just wanted these places that were really distinct and full of contrast. Now I'm just adding a little bit of light um, in this tree line here in the back that's very vague, which is exactly what I wanted. That's why I tried to wait as long as I could to determine what everything was because I just wanted to do a landscape where they didn't look exactly like trees. You had to use your imagination to really 
fill in the holes in this painting. And, and that's, that's exactly what I wanted. So as you can see, it is starting to take some shape and I'm starting to be happy with a lot of things about it. So pushing my tolerance level for all that time in which it didn't look good at all was worth it. It actually did take me a lot of years to realize that the only thing standing between me and some paintings that I really liked was this tolerance level. If I couldn't get through the, the formative stages, then I would never get a painting that I really loved. So that piece of collage is bothering me. So then there I am with my hand. I'm, I'm sort of covering it up to see if I need to try to get rid of it. It was, it was just distracting me. So now I'm trying to tear it away, which is being very stubborn. So once I tore away what I could, then I, I kind of liked the effect of it there. And I just tried to put some paint over it here and there. You can still see it shine through though. So now I'm just lightening up that sky there and I'm looking at my color wheel to really decide for my pops of color, what color do I want? I want, I want to just add some color here and there that's really going to pop. So I have chosen first some dark sort of brick reds and now I'm, I'm choosing some um, a little bit of a pinkish red there to put in the water and eventually I put in some bold red marks just straight up red so here's some close-ups of what is going on on that surface as you can see it's it's a lot of collage still showing through when you get up close it doesn't remotely look really look like a, a landscape which I love, but when you do pull back, you get to see um, the slight representation of a landscape there. This was exactly what I was going for. I'm not sure if it's done or not, but I'm happy with my experiment. I learned a lot with this painting. And I'm taking away a lot from this painting and carrying it into other paintings that I'm presently doing. So to recap, the three ways to push the boundaries of your work, drastically upsize or downsize out of your comfort zone, don't decide what you're painting too soon and grow a tolerance for unattractive work. Make bad art. So here it is in a mock-up and the final product. Thanks for going on this ride with me. I really enjoyed it. And pick up a free copy of my Art Buyer's Guide to Unleashing Magic in Your Life. Really using the art you buy to add intention to your life. You can pick that up on my website. Thanks so much for visiting me. And I appreciate you watching and feel free to leave me comments. I love to read them and answer every one.